talking about the committee on teachers and administrators. I'd like to have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Barrows? Here. Mr. Panarisi here. We have a quorum. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Obrensky. Thank you, Mr. Panarisi. It gives me great pleasure this evening to begin to introduce the new staff we have for the 2019-2020 school year. There are almost 140 individuals in this room. A lot of them were hired after November 1st of last year that were never introduced to the committee in the community at home, so we brought them back this evening to introduce them. A lot of them were hired with the additional funding from the city government and in the, in the mayor that we received this school year. So this time I'd like to turn it over to Mrs. Go Janice Gothia, the interim superintendent of schools, who will introduce the new administrative staff that we have. Good evening, it's a pleasure to welcome everybody here this evening. So Mr. John Sutera, would you stand please? Mr. Sutera has been reassigned. He was a dean at Everett High School. He is now the assistant principal at the English School and he is credentialed from the University of Mass in Boston. Thank you, Mr. Sutera. Mr. Paolo Lambresa, formerly a dean at Everett High School. He's been reassigned as an assistant principal at the Lafayette. He is credentialed from the Massachusetts School of Law. Thank you. Mr. Dennis Lynch, also formerly a dean at Everett High School. He has been reassigned as an assistant principal at the Parland School, credentialed from the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. Thank you. Ms. Brittany Hay. Uh, she's assigned to Everett High School. She is the EL department head, English language learner, and she is credentialed from Salem State University. Welcome. Heather Barb. Heather was formerly the English language learner department head. She is at the high school and has been reassigned as the academy assistant principal of health and public service. She is credentialed from Ashford University. Welcome. Mr. Stephen Black, assigned at EHS as an Academy Assistant Principal of Science, Techni Technology, and Engineering. He is credentialed from New York University. Welcome. Mr. Donadoni, he is assigned to Everett High School, and Mr. Donadoni is the Academy Assistant Principal of Freshman Experience. He is credentialed from Salem State University. Welcome. And I won't call you Phil. <laughs> Janet O'Reilly, Everett High School. Janet is the Academy Assistant Principal of Construction, Machining, and Architectural Design. She's credentialed from Lesley University. Welcome. Lucy Di Natale, Everett High School, formerly a dean. Lucy is now an Academy Assistant Principal of Business, Law, and Hospitality. She is credentialed through Cambridge College. Dr. Omar Easy. Everett High School. Dr. Easy is the Executive Assistant Principal of Business and Innovation. He is credentialed from Penn State University. Thank you. Ms. Michelle Rooney, Administration. Mrs. Rooney is formerly the coordinator of Title I. She is now the Director, Director of Literacy and Title I, credentialed through Salem State University. Thank you. Mrs. Michelle Crowell, Administration Building. She's the Director of Curriculum. She's credentialed through Cambridge College. Thank you, and I mean thank you. <laughs> Steve, uh, Carrie Wahlberg, Administration. Carrie is the Director of Human Resources, and she comes by a long way, California State University. Welcome, Carrie. Stephen Venezia, Administration Building. Stephen was a social studies teacher for a number of years. He is now the director of social studies, and Stephen is credentialed through Suffolk University. Welcome. Carolyn Parmenter. Carolyn is the department head for culinary arts, and she is credentialed through UMass Amherst, and she's going to be a busy lady. Julianne Whitson. Mrs. Whitson is the health coordinator for the district, and Julianne has been in the health department for a number of years, and I didn't get your college. Tufts University. Tufts University. So welcome all. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you, Mrs. Gauthier. Next, I'd like to introduce Ms. Laurie Stokes, the head teacher at the Adams School, who will introduce the new staff for the Adams. 
Good evening. First up, I'd like to introduce Lisa Antonelli. She is coming to the Adams as a pre-K-4 teacher, and she is credentialed from Cambridge College. Thank you. Next, we have Holly Archibald. She's coming to the Adams as our unassigned teacher, and she is credentialed from Bay Path University. Welcome. Thank you, Ms. Stokes. Next, I'd like to introduce Dr. Wallace, the principal of the Devon School. Good evening. The uh, Devon School would like to welcome the newest members of our faculty. Erica Joyce, she will be joining us as an elementary school teacher. She's a graduate of Northeastern Technical College. Krista Moscone will be an unassigned staff at the Devon School. She's a graduate of Salem State University. Dawn Russo will be a teacher in our high school program. She's a graduate of Fitchburg State University. Allison Scholastico is joining our team as an elementary school teacher, and she is a graduate of Merrimack College. Welcome. Next, I'd like to introduce Ms. John, Mr. John Cetera, the assistant principal at the Madeline English School. I'd like to welcome all, everybody, uh, all the new highs in the Madeline English School. Uh, Timothy Capetta is, was hired as an unassigned teacher, and he attended the University of Connecticut. Victoria Crowley was hired as a grade three teacher and she attended the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Dory Ann Dol Dolotiski, she's gonna be a grade one teacher at the English and she went to Wheelock College. Katie Duchin, she's gonna be a grade four teacher at the English and she attended Brandeis University. Lisa Haida. She's a spe uh, hired as a special education teacher and she went to National Lewis University. Kayla Luis, she's gonna be a grade two teacher at the English and she, she attended Salem State University. Nicole Regan, she's gonna be a grade two teacher at the English and she attended Endicott College. Carla Valentine, she's gonna be an art teacher at the English and she went to Tufts University. Raymond Willis is gonna be a special education teacher at the English, and he attended Wheelock College. And Alex Zitnick, he's gonna be a special education teacher at the English, and he went to the Un University of Massachusetts at Boston. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sotera. Next, I'd like to introduce Mr. Alex Norman, principal of the George Kavarian School. Good evening, um, Mrs. Taylor and myself would like to uh, welcome the newest members of the Cavarian School faculty. Alessandra Bisconti, grade three teacher, graduate of Bridgewater State College. Dina Bauer, English language learner department, graduate of the UMass Lowell. Jessalyn Brown will be in our guidance department and she's a graduate of Fitchburg State University. Megan Claffey will be assigned to our English language learner department and graduate of Salem State University. Carmen Quella will also be assigned to our English Language Learning Department, and she's a graduate of Salem State University. Carolyn DeChico will be assigned to our Art Department. She's a graduate of Leslie University. Brenda Ferreira will be assigned to our newly minted STEM position, our STEM specialist position at the Cabarian School, and she is coming to us from Westfield State University. Rachel Holt will be a kindergarten teacher. She comes to us from Bridgewater State College. Jillian Levine will be assigned as one of our physical education teachers coming to us from Endicott College. Tenzin Laden will be an unassigned teacher. Tenzin is coming to us from Northeastern University. Leisha Lee will be our eighth grade science teacher and she's coming to us as a graduate of Harvard University. Morgan Lynch will be assigned to our English language learning department. She's a graduate of Boston University. Jean Martinez will also be signed to our English Language Learning Department, and she is a graduate of Grand Canyon University. Maria Messina will be assigned as a kindergarten teacher at the Cavarian School, coming to us from Cambridge College. Michael Minucci, special education teacher, uh, seventh grade inclusion, coming to us from Springfield College. Lisa Petrie, also assigned to our English Language Learning Department, she's a graduate of Leslie University. Mark Sacchetta, 
coming to us as a, the music teacher at the Kaverian School, uh, an alum of the uh, Everett Public Schools music program. Welcome, Mark. He is a graduate of Boston University. Sanai Sahali will be assigned as a seventh grade math teacher at the Kaverian. He's a graduate of Framingham State University. And Tabitha Schober will be eighth grade math, eighth grade math teacher at the Kaverian School, coming to us from Lesley University. Thank you and welcome all. Thank you, Mr. Norman. Next, I'd like to introduce Mr. David Brady, the principal of the Lafayette School. Thank you, Mr. Rimsky. Mr. Lombresser and I would like to welcome the new members to the Lafayette. First, we have Christy Arundel. Uh, she'll be assigned to the guidance department. She comes to us from Southern New Hampshire University. Next, we have Maria Crafts, unassigned teacher. She comes to us from Salem State University. Next, we have Caitlin Dooley, who's a grade six inclusion teacher from Salem State University. Next, we have Lisette Feliciano. She's grade seven inclusion, and she is from Emmanuel College. Next, we have Laura Gavostis. She's an assigned teacher. She comes to us from American International College. Next, we have Catherine Kohova. She's assigned to our English Language Learning Department, University of Mass, Boston. Next, we have Stephanie Lasafre. She'll be in our art department. She's coming from Salem State University. Next, we have Colby Massa, Special Education Department, Curry College. Next, we have Hannah Mahegan, English Language Learner Department, John Hopkins University. Next, we have Rachel Pierce, grade six teacher, Salem State University. Next is Victoria Thistle, grade four teacher, Emmanuel College, coming back to Lafayette, where she went to school, as, as, as Rachel Pierce did. Next, we have Mark Whitman, Health Department, East Carolina University. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce Mr. John Obremski, principal of the Pollen School. Thank you. Mr. Lynch and I would like to welcome the new staff members to the Pollen School. First up, Lindsay Bolin, guidance department, graduate of Cambridge College. Next, Eliza Brennan Pratt, English language learner department, Leslie University. <coughs> Next up, Charlotte Champney, Music Department, Gordon College. Uh -huh. Next, Christian Ciano, English Language Learner Department, Cambridge College. Next is Janelle Costa, Grade 5 Teacher, Cambridge College. Next, Natalia De Silva, English Language Learner Department, Boston University. Next is Jillian Enos, Art Department, from Springfield College. Next is Kayla Foscarto, grade four teacher, Bridgewater State University. Next is Rena Hatch, grade five teacher, Leslie University. Next is Rebecca Hoyle, English Language Learner Department, Simmons College. Next is Maureen Johnson, grade five special education inclusion teacher, Leslie University. Next is Lindsay Kiley, kindergarten teacher, American International College. Next is Kristen Lindquist, Science Department, the University of New Hampshire. Next is Maria Linehan, grade three special education inclusion teacher, Bridgewater State University. Next is Claudina Mazzini, English Language Learner Department, Merrimack College. Next is Charlotte Mezoff, Math Department, University of Pennsylvania College of General Studies. Next is Melina Moreno, Grade 4 Special Education Inclusion Teacher, Northeastern University. Next is Jordan O'Day, Grade 5 Teacher, Simmons College. Next is Catherine Piffith, Grade six, special education inclusion teacher, University of Massachusetts at Boston. Next is Chelsea Picaro, physical education department, Salem State University. Next is Andrea Ross. She'll be an unassigned teacher from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. 
Next is Alexa Roth, English Language Learner Department, Merrimack College. She's just recently transferred to the Lafayette School. Next is Allison Sutera, Grade 1 Teacher, Salem State University. Next is Ann Sevchek, English Language Learner Department, Boston University. And last is Casey Wilcox, Grade 2 Teacher, Merrimack College. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Obremski. Next, I'd like to introduce Ms. Denise Hanlon, Principal of the Webster School. Good evening. I'd like to introduce some new faculty members at the Webster School. First, we have Cassandra Clemens. Ms. Clemens is a special education teacher at the Webster School, and she is a graduate of Lesley University. Our next teacher is Nicole Howard. She is also a special education teacher at the Webster School from Nova Southeastern University. We also have Kristen McGrath in our technology department, and she has graduated from Lesley University. Thank you, welcome. Next, I'd like to introduce Ms. Michelle Bosco, who will introduce the new teachers at the Webster School Extension. Good evening, this year we have several additions to the Webster Extension. First, I have Ms. Emily Chorman. Emily is joining our special education department and she is a graduate of Boston University. Next, I have Mrs. Lindsay Keehan. Lindsay will be teaching pre-K three. She is a graduate of American International College. And last but not least, I actually have Deanna Griffin. Deanna Griffin is going to be a third grade teacher at the Webster School and she is also a graduate of American International College. Thank you, welcome to all. Thank you, Mrs. Bosco. Next would be Mr. Michael McLucas, the principal of the Whittier School. Thank you, Mr. Obremski. Mrs. Sutera and I are excited to introduce the new staff members of the Whittier School. First up, we have Olivia Safrino. English Language Learner Department from Smith College. Next we have Michael Dooley, Grade 6 Inclusion Teacher, Southern New Hampshire University. Next we have Carly Fiora, Grade 6 Teacher from the College of St. Rose. Next we have Alexandra McFarland, Unassigned Teacher from Merrimack College. Next we have Melina, I'm sorry, I think I missed one. Kayla Giovino, grade six teacher, Bridgewater State University. And Melina Mavroforos, math department from Salem State University. Next we have Sarah McDonald, unassigned teacher from American International College. Next, we have Rebecca Milley, kindergarten teacher from Salem State University. Next, we have Emily Pickett, K-1 special education inclusion teacher from Merrimack College. And last, we have Kayla Scholl, English language learner department from Boston University. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Mr. McLucas. Next would be Mr. Eric Norman, principal of Everett High School. Thank you, Mr. Obremski. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to all the new teachers to the Everett Public School System and to our teachers here at Everett High School. On behalf of the administrative team at EHS, we'd like to welcome all of you. First up for Everett High School, Ms. Christine Andriotti. Ms. Andriotti will be going to the English department. She holds a degree from UMass Boston. Next, we have Ms. Britta Ashman. Ms. Ashman will be added to our guidance department and she holds a degree from Bridgewater State University. Next, we have Mr. Aaron Eau He'll be coming to our CTE department, Career and Technical Education, with skills from Essex Skills Technical. Next up, Ms. Elizabeth Bendler. Ms. Bendler will be coming to our science department here at Everett High School, and she comes to us from the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Next up in CTE, Mr. Corey Barassa. Mr. Barassa comes to us from Fitchburg State University. 
Next, we have Brendan Callahan. Mr. Callahan will be added to our connections department here at Everett High School, and he holds a degree from Salem State University. Next, Anthony Cucinata. Mr. Cucinata will be an unassigned teacher here at Everett High School with a degree from New England School of Law. Next, Adrian Curtin. Mr. Curtin will be added to our math department here at Everett High School, and he comes to us from Stonehill College. Next up, Diane Donato. Ms. Donato will be coming to the English Language Learner Department with a degree from Gordon College. Next, we have Mr. Brian Fabry. He comes to our Career and Technical Education Department with his carpentry license. Next, we have Mr. Cortland Ferreira Douglas. Mr. Ferreira Douglas will be coming to our Science Department with a degree from Whitman College. Next, to our World Language Department, we have Ms. Shannon Gilmartin. Ms. Gilmartin comes to us from Salem State University. Next, in our CTE school, Mr. Sean Hare, Career Technical Education, comes to us into our Culinary Department from Johnson and Wales. Next, we have Rachel Johnson in the Science Department. She comes to Everett High School from the University of Texas. And I got Mr. Hare, I got culinary wrong, didn't I, Mr. Hare? Hospitality. Hospitality. You got to get that right, make sure I have you right. Next up, Ms. Nicola Jones, Health Department. She comes to us from Worcester State University. Next, Ms. Amelia Linehan. Ms. Linehan uh, came to our guidance department last year. She's hit back this year. She comes to us from Salem State University. Next up, Ms. Chelsea McNiff. Ms. McNiff is coming to our English Language Learner Department with a degree from Boston University. Next in our art department, Mr. William Meganson. Mr. Meganson comes to us from the Savannah College of Art Design. Next to our math department, Mr. Michael Munoz. Mr. Munoz will be coming to us from Boston University. Next up in our CTE, uh, with CT, Career Technical Education, an Everett High School graduate, I believe, Ms. Desiree Perry. Ms. Perry comes to us from Southern New Hampshire University. Next up, also CTE, Mr. Eric Pierce. Mr. Pierce comes to us with his carpentry license into our CTE program. Next, also to CTE, Ms. Amanda Pierce comes to us from Regis College. In our science department, up next we have Ms. Emily Raphael. Ms. Raphael comes to us from, I want to make sure I get it right, from Smith College. Next up, Mr. Bob Sansone. He'll be an unassigned teacher here at Everett High School, and he's coming to us from Northeastern University. Next up, in our math department, Mr. Kevin Schreck. Mr. Schreck holds a degree from Boston University. Next up in our special education department, Ms. Michelle Tagliarino. She comes to us with a degree from Teachers College at Columbia University. And if I have this right, she was the first female to play high school hockey here at Everett High School. Okay, just a fact. And that would put all the teachers together, unless, did I miss anyone from the high school? No? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Norman. I want to congratulate everybody for coming to work for the Everett Public Schools. It's a great school system. And Mr. Chairman, Mr. Apresay, and Mrs. Gothi, I don't know if you'll make any comments before we dismiss them. Watch for those diamonds tomorrow. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Apresay, yes, Mr. Barris. Uh, just as a member of the subcommittee on teachers, I just want to welcome all of you to our schools. Uh, it's a great place to work for and it's going to get even better. And uh, feel, I hope you feel welcome. We have a large population of English language learners, um, and all of our students are looking forward to have you uh, in the classroom this year. I also want to um, thank and congratulate the, the new assignments for principals, vice principals, assistant principals as well. Uh, Please count on the school committee to give you the full support that you need, uh, both as administrators and as new teachers uh, as well. So welcome to the schools. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barros. Uh, well, from the chair, 
I've always said I've been on the school committee now going back to the uh, previous century, off and on. And uh, all I know is uh, I went to school in the Everett Public Schools, uh, proceeded to go on to school for what seemed like the rest of my life while I uh, uh, eventually became the first person in my family to get a postgraduate degree when I went to law school. And to this day, I still know the, the teachers that had the impact on my life, uh, Ms. Lewis, kindergarten, Ms. Curran, first grade, uh, Ms. Breen in fifth grade, uh, one of the greatest teachers of all time, it was a former assistant superintendent, Mr. Dolan. I had the good fortune of having him for two different classes when I was at the Powell Inn. Uh, Mr. Play, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I know from my perspective, a lot of times uh, because of contracts and things like that, we end up in sort of uh, adversarial positions, school committee and uh, teachers and uh, administrators, but uh, just understand that is not the case in, in terms of from our hearts. Uh, I know for a fact that uh, being a teacher is a calling it's something that you have to be passionate about. Uh, as I said, I've been blessed in my life by great teachers. And uh, again, just appreciate everything you do. And there's some great people, especially the young teachers that are here. There's some great administrators. If there's ever any issues of any kind, please feel free to approach those administrators. And uh, you know, again, I know for a fact that those doors are open and they will continue to be open. So please uh, take advantage of that. And uh, from on behalf of the Everett School Committee, welcome and good luck uh, in your future here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Epperse. Same thing, just congratulations to all. And um, you have a huge impact on kids. Like Mr. Epperse said, I think I can remember all my teachers from kindergarten up. And it's a great school system. Uh, welcome, and I think that'll end uh, the meeting on the committee on teachers and administrators. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Congratulations. Good luck this year. Have a great year. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, you're all free to go home. Get <laughs> you want, get a good night's sleep.
All right, the August 26th meeting of the school committee will come to order. Uh, let's start by saluting the flag. Uh, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first up, I'm going to do roll call and also introduce Lawrence, Lauren Kramer to everybody. Lauren? Mrs. Um, Ocreo? Ms. McLaughlin? Yes, here. Mrs. Cardello? Here. Mr. Panarisi? Here. Ms. Lavonica? Here. Mr. Parker? Present. Mr. Ela? Here. Mr. Barrows? Here. Mr. Abruzzi? Here. Uh, we have eight members present. We have a quorum. Uh, first up, reading of the records, Mrs. Gauthier. I move we waive the reading of the records for all three meetings and accept as written. Second. Uh, motion made and seconded to waive the reading of the records for the June 17th, June 27th, and August 1st meeting and accept them as written. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have. Roman numeral two, report of the superintendent, Mrs. Gauthier. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'd like to provide an update of all the work that's been done in the district throughout the summer. Um, all carpets anywhere in the district buildings have been uh, shampooed. At the Adams School, some sealing of the exterior foundation to stop water seepage into the basement was done and install new controllers on boilers. Uh, at the Devon School, regular cleaning and general maintenance. At the English School, paint the entire interior, insulation of chiller piping, replacement of three valves on chillers, landscape new plantings and sprinklers across the front of the building, and refinish the gym floor, which is wood. At EHS, Everett High School renovations in the creation of new CTE, Career Tech Education, spaces on the fifth floor, reconfigure the second floor teacher lounge, refurbish and repair two roof chillers, refinish the gym floor, and install 32 hand dryers throughout the core restrooms. At the Kaverian, regular cleaning and general maintenance, added and exchanged 137 student desks. At the Lafayette, insulation of chiller piping and mechanical rooms, repair of exterior wall at the kindergarten room, which is still in process, Installation of 16 hand dryers in student restrooms. At the Parlin, repave the entire parking and playground area. Paint the interior of the building completed by our own employees. Remove and replace the piping under the basement floor to repair steam leaks. Install VCT flooring in the basement corridor damage that was caused by steam leaks. And creating new classroom space through the interior moves. That's it. Just to give a brief update on the wall at the Lafayette, the reason it's held up is the gentleman that the contractor is doing the job is waiting for the block. He had to wait till he could open up the wall before he could determine what block it was and to match the existing block. So hopefully it will be in the next couple of weeks and he'll continue to do the work after school so it doesn't interfere. Got it. All right. Thank you. Next, um, I'd like to ask permission to bring Senator Domenico on earmark funding for this upcoming school year. And might I add that we've been very happy to have had the budget, um, the mayor passed the budget for us so early in the year because we got to com uh, complete all the new hires so in a timely manner. So I was appreciative of that for the first time out. So, Senator. Um, I'll entertain a motion to bring, forward, bring the Senator forward. So move. Second. Second. So move. Uh, so move. Motion made and seconded to bring forth Senator Domenico. All those in favor? Aye. Those ayes have a welcome, Senator. Thank you very much. And I have my phone, not because I'm texting, because all the information is on my phone. So this is the new way of doing things, which I'm not too adept at yet. But uh, thank you, Superintendent Gauthier, Mr. Chairman, and members of the committee for, being, for allowing me to speak tonight. Um, I was asked to come and explain some of the earmarks that uh, I secured in the state budget, and I just wanted to if you want me to run through them, I can do them quickly. Is that please? Okay. okay. Uh, first, as we have done in the last couple of years, 
Uh, we got $75,000 in the budget for music programming. So last year, we, the band used some of those funds to go to uh, Washington, D.C., which I was proud to accompany them with so many people from our community and members here as well. Uh, that is again in the state budget, so that's $75,000 for our music program. $50,000 is for technology improvements or upgrades that can be used for anything from Chromebooks, from any technology upgrades. Uh, we wrote it in a way where we kept it flexible to allow the superintendent and the school committee to use it as they see fit for our schools. And we also got $100,000 for the elementary in, I'm sorry, engineering is elementary, which is the Museum of Science program. I believe that was also in the Kaverian School uh, a little while ago. That was secured last year and again this year as well. That's $100,000 split between Everett and Cambridge. And they also got $75,000 for an opioid uh, treatment uh, counselor, which will also help with some of the issues that are happening throughout our entire city, not just the schools, but also our city in general. And the Chapter 70 was a $6 million increase over last year, last year's number. So that was uh, actually, we put in the Senate budget and then it was later approved by the conference committee. It was the largest increase of education funding in the last 50 years. Uh, so in terms of percentage-wise as well, not just numbers, but percentages. So that was a big, big investment by the state government this year for our schools across our state and Everett got $6 million more as, as a result of that. And some of the other things that touch our students in our school systems, we have, as you know, uh, many of our families are low income in the city of Everett. And a lot qualify for federal benefits and state benefits. And anyone who is on mass health has a hard time accessing food funding at the federal level because you just don't know where to turn. A lot of these families are working two or three jobs in our school system and they don't have time to fill up paperwork. So I was able to get a million dollars in the state budget to allow anyone who's on mass health to automatically apply for SNAP benefits, which is no cost to the state. There are federal dollars that are never accessed for our state because no one knows how to access them or how to apply for them. So this will allow anyone who's on mass health to automatically qualify and apply for any federal food insecurity benefits. And that will help a lot of families. I know there's thousands of families in Everett who have mass health but don't qualify or don't even know how to qualify for SNAP benefits. So that will allow many of our families to have more food on their table um, for their families. And also breakfast after the bell. So breakfast after the bell, the city of Everett has been ahead of the curve on that. Um, no, but not so much across our state. So I also put language in the state budget to address that, to not have our kids be segregated, the low-income kids segregated in the cafeteria while everyone else goes to class. And many of those low-income kids do not go to the cafeteria because they don't want to be seen as low-income kids. So they go and come to school hungry, they go to their classroom, they spend the morning trying to learn, but you can't learn on an empty stomach because the last meal you had was lunch the previous day. And now we're trying to roll this out across our state for breakfast in the classroom so no child is left behind when it comes to breakfast and food insecurity. And that was in the budget and we also have a bill to codify that and make it an actual law, not just a, an amendment in the state budget to make it permanent for, for forever going forward. Um, but those are some of the things that we've secured in, in the budget forever. Questions for the Senator? Mr. Barrows. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, I do not have a question. I just want to make a comment, uh, Senator, that sometimes I joke calling you a champion. It's not a joke. You really are. That is, if I do a quick math, it's over seven, eight, eight million dollars that you brought to the schools. Our music program, which is award-winning, technology, opioid treatment. We are lucky to have you. So, and I mean it. I just want to thank you uh, for that because if it was not for your, uh, your support, uh, I work across from the State House. I've been in that building for years working uh, and with all due respect to your fellow 39 colleagues, 
there are not many like you at, uh, that fight so hard for the district. So that's why I want to thank you uh, very much for this. Um, I just want to make a, a, ask a question to the administration uh, regarding the six million dollars. I want that to be clear that the senator is bringing six million dollars, but the schools and Mr. Bransky, correct me if I am wrong, or Ms. Gautier, we are not getting the six million dollars in addition to what we already got. So, correct. correct. <laughs> we got yeah. six six point five in advance. So I just I just wanted the public to be aware that. The city advance gave us 6.5 million. The senator brings us six million dollars, but the public is not getting those six million dollars additional. Well, just to be clear, and I don't have the budget figures in front of me, but at the end when they reached the compromise committee, mm -hmm. okay, we did get whatever additional chapter 70 money was in the budget at first, minus the chargebacks, we did get. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I can bring the figure to the next meeting, I email it to you tomorrow. I believe it was around the 6.1. Six, since that time, when the uh, House and Senate and the Compromise Committee reached agreement, there was an additional, when you figure out um, charter school assessments, tuition, there was changes in about four different line items that would affect the school department. The additional appropriation we would have received after some pluses and some minuses would have been about $1.5 million. So based on the upfront money that the mayor and the city council appropriated, which was about 6.5, which was 6.5 million above net school spending, we will not be getting that additional 1.5 million. We did get everything else prior to that, which I believe was around 6 million. I can give you the exact figure tomorrow morning, but the money since House One, which was the governor's original budget, which is about 1.5 million, Mr. Ela did a Mr. Ela did a spreadsheet that I can email you tomorrow that shows it all. I'll email it to you tomorrow. And I reviewed it with the um, chief financial officer, Mr. Demas. The city will be keeping that based on the fact that the mayor and the city council appropriated six and a half million above net school spending back in mid June, approximately mid June. Sure. Sure. Yeah, just uh, uh, Senator. Yeah, no, I, I understand what Mr. Bremsk is saying, uh, and and he's talking about what the um, the final result is. But what, what I'm talking about is the year-over-year year number, mm -hmm. not what is budgeted right. from the original House, mm -hmm. uh, house one. house 1. So I'm talking year-over-year. Year. So mm -hmm. from last year to this year, mm -hmm. the number was $6 million. But I know what Mr. Bremsky is saying, the original budget is what you budget off of. Correct. So that's the number that you go by when you do your original budget. So you use that number as a base. So whatever comes in additionally after that point. What I'm saying is that from last year to this year, Chapter 70 forever on the state number was over $6 million, a little, little over $6 million additional from last year. And the one, the one discrepancy, and no one at this table says this, so I, I don't want to, and no one at City Hall says this either, but um, I do hear once in a while that um, education funding has been cut by the state. Um, and I hear that it has been reduced by the state. As long as I've been a state senator, and that has never happened to the city of Everett or any community that I represented. That has never gone down. Now, I can talk all day about what we should be getting <laughs> as a result of what the formula change was, because that is where we're getting hurt, and that's what we're working on to try to address in the House and the Senate. But I do want to clear up to the general public that funding for Chapter 70 education funding has never been cut since 2010 when I was a senator. So that, 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 that is just where, you know, I wasn't going to even say that, but we're talking about that piece, but I thought I was talking about earmarks. But, but that, that piece of it does come up on occasion, and I do want to clear that up. And just to, just to reiterate on what the senator said, when you go back four years ago when they first started talking about making this change, Mr. Shaw and myself did some research on this, and it was presented when we presented the budget last year. We estimate we're losing between about $6.4 million for those economically disadvantaged right. students that are not on SNAP or TANF or any of those programs that now qualify. That's pretty much what the city gave us above net school spending. Right. Pretty much the same number. So if we had, or, or were collecting the lunch forms like we previously did, and we had the same mechanism in place, 
we probably wouldn't have had to request that additional money mm -hmm. from the city. It would have came from the state in, in the form of Chapter 78. Right. Right. On, uh, on that note, if I may, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Santo, do you have an update uh, regarding the big thing that I'm reading about the Promise Act. Promise Act is talking the, about uh, the Promise Act, mm -hmm. or in or, or there is a I believe there was a House <laughs> bill besides the Promise Act. Right. But how negotiations are going, sure. uh, and if there is any hope that something is going to happen regarding, you know, Chapter Seven funding. If we can fix what Mr. Bremsky is talking about, um, which has been my mission for the last four years of trying to at least do some stopgap by bringing the forms back. So Everett did a great job of collecting the funeral lunch forms. And as a result of that, the numbers were, were the right numbers. Many communities did not do a good job of that. And because of that, many big cities did a really bad job of collecting the forms. So many of the big cities in our state uh, wanted this change because the work that was done by communities like Everett uh, took a lot of time. <coughs> and energy. And because of that and because of the change that was being pushed at the State House, you know, many of our kids, uh, we have an undocumented population in the city. We have folks that don't qualify for state benefits because they're not in the country long enough. They're legal residents, but they don't qualify because of the residency time lapse. So a lot of our low-income kids are not being counted appropriately, thus we're not getting the additional funding at the state level. The bill that we have before us, the State House, there are two bills. One's called the Promise Act, which is a more encompassing bill and includes many of the city of Boston's concerns. Mm -hmm. That would be about $2 billion a year uh, to start. And I'm a co-sponsor of that. And I am uh, pushing for some bill. I don't care what, who sponsored it, what the name of it is. Yeah. I don't care who brought it forward, what House it did, what the Senate did. I want something done. And, and now we're at, a, we're at a place where I believe there's a lot of capital built up. The Senate President, the Speaker of the House, and the Governor want to address this issue. They're, they're tired of hearing from communities like ours who are getting shortchanged because of the, the negative impacts of this formula change. And I was hopeful that we were going to get it done before our break, which we, we call it a break, but an unofficial break in August. And we did not. But there is a lot of hope, and the Education Committee, which I sit on, this is all they've been doing since January. This is one fix. And I believe that uh, this fall we'll have a, a permanent solution. The problem with why it's taken so long, and, and this, is, this is inside baseball more than, than what people need to know, but there are a lot of moving parts because some communities, when you change one thing, it affects them. Change something else, it affects another part of the state. And we're trying to minimize the negative impacts across the entire state. You don't want to help Everett and then hurt someone else. So, which. I don't know, I'm not going to say what I say. <laughs> but, <laughs> as long as it's not Chelsea or Cambridge or Boston, you know, that I'm good. But um, that, that's where we're at because there's a lot of moving parts here. And this fix, once we do it this time, we're not going to look at this. Let's be honest. It won't be looked at again for another 35, 40 years. So if we don't get it right now, we're not coming back next year to, to revise or amend the law. Right. So something has to be done and it has to be done right. But I have got inside information in terms of what the issues we're talking about in terms of how addressing the low-income population and, and how they counted. And uh, there, is, there are a couple of fixes built in that, that bill that would, uh, would be very helpful to us and very helpful to our community with funding. And it would be nice not to have to, um, to ask anyone for additional funding because, that's, that, as Mr. Brensky said, six, $6 million is actually um, a low number. Uh, if we got $6 million, I'd be happy, but I'm, we're, we're talking double digit increases. Thank you. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Mr. Real. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to the Senator. Would this, when this bill gets passed, let's think positively, would it affect our 2021 budget or 2022? Yeah, so it, it's all timing. So if we, we, had, we had done this in the beginning of the year, it would have been the next budget. We would have been ready to go next year. So. Um, I can tell you what the, what the hope is, and I can tell you what everyone wants to be done. They want this done for the next, next fiscal year. So I can almost guarantee, without guaranteeing, I guess, but because um, the, 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 will of the will of the House and the Chamber is to get this done. So it, it is, I've never seen such a, 
you know, a collaborative effort on the House and Senate side of trying to get something done as big as this. Uh, and people just, they're, they're tired of answering the questions. And we know that all the promises made by DESE and, and by the administration that everyone's gonna be held harmless turned out to be very false. It was a lie, it was a lie. And I have told them that publicly, privately. Um, they don't like what I say it publicly, but I do, because it is true. Communities like Everett and Chelsea got hammered by this change. And they have promised year after year to address it. And we put money in the pothole account, which is a, a quick fix. We have to secure additional funding in that. Last year we were able to do two and a half more million dollars. Every year we could do a little bit more, but we never fix the underlying question. And this is why we need to have the permanent fix in place. And uh, it, it, it's, it's a good bet that it'll happen next fiscal year because there's, there's too much riding on this to have another year go by. And I do want to mention that there was one other thing that, that Mrs. Gauthier, Mr. Bremsky, Mr. Shar actually um, asked for in the budget and we were able to get it was $75,000 for after school robotics programming in the middle school grades. Uh, so that is also in the budget as well that we were able to secure in the state budget. And the last thing I will say is, and we need help with the community on, on this too, because um, we all know that the census is coming up. And the census affects our school system because all the grant programs and all the funding that comes from the federal government and some of the state funding and, and state um, grants depends on your population and depends on where people are living. And in this time of uncertainty, what's happening in, in the federal government, people are afraid to sign any kind of document that says who they are, where they live, and you know, basically giving up personal information. As a result, our funding is cut or lowered or not given as much because our population is not adequately counted. So I got $2 million in the budget this fiscal year to address the hardest impacted areas like Everett and Chelsea, to go into the communities with trusted people and leaders in the communities to go in and actually get people to sign these documents. Because if they don't, we're gonna be negatively impacted again with funding. We're not gonna get our fair share. So that $2 million is going to help us identify the people that are afraid to sign these documents and, and let them know that this is not going to have any you know, any kind of impact on their status <coughs> and, and with what the federal government's going to try to do or not do with them and their family. So it's, it's a, we're living in a, in a tough time where people don't even want to put their name on anything. And, and that has impacts for the next several years on funding for our communities. Mr. Parker, thank you Mr. Chairman, to, to the Senator. So it's um, been kind of fun, crazy watching what's been going on the last 12 months. It's like a chess game on steroids. Um, governor, Taco Bell, Promise, FBRC. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, what was so sad last year that the Compromise Committee uh, couldn't come to agreement is definitely done a 180 uh, over the past 12 months. And, you know, I'm ecstatic with you know, the results. But, so you, what, are you, what are you telling us is that the focus is now is to determine a formula. Okay, that's key for us because here we are, it's, uh, let's, let's call it September. October 1st, the attendance goes in and the budget process starts all over again. At least with that formula, and you know this, right? I'm not talking out of turn. At least with a formula, at least we'll have like a one or two year window um, to kind of plan on and build on. I mean, trying to budget a school system with 7,000 kids and 900 employees every 10 months is just crazy. Um, because Dave can tell us in his head what's going to happen next year and the year after that from a financial standpoint. You tweak the formula, you know, you make some changes, and now we can really start planning for the next fiscal year and have that cushion um, and, and that safety net. So thank you for all you do, um, and um, we appreciate it. My pleasure. So I, I will just point out that you did spill the beans, so I, I didn't want to say it publicly, but I will. October is a very important time for us to get this done by, and that is what we're shooting for, because we know that's when the numbers start getting counted. And if we don't get it done by then, then it's another 
you have to put something within the language to address that issue in mm -hmm. particular. Okay. That we cannot use the October numbers to say how many of our economic disadvantaged students there are. We have to change the date. Because if not, then we have a formula that's still not capturing all the adequate numbers if we use a false number to start right, off with. So. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Ms. Garthia. I'd like to thank the Senator for all the hard work. Okay. Thank you. Uh, from the Chair, uh, Senator, this has been sort of a, going back to the beginning of this year, it's been sort of a crazy time <laughs> for us, uh, administration, schools. Um, you talked about talking privately, talking publicly about things. Uh, I know I thank you privately, but uh, all of us, I think, uh, uh, the whole community thanks you. I want to thank you publicly, everything you do. I was talking about passion in terms of being a teacher. One thing that's evident to me is the passion you have to uh, represent everybody in our community. Uh, it shows some people talk the talk. I mean, you really walk the walk and uh, really, really appreciate it, Senator. Thank you. Thank you. And along those lines, just so everybody knows, we invited the Senator here today. The Senator just doesn't show up and say, I want to do a, <laughs> a, a 10 minute <laughs> spot tonight on the school committee. Uh, we invited the Senator and thank you so much, thank you, uh, Senator DiDomenico. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse thank the customary thanks. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All set, Ms. Garfield. Item number two is the acceptance of the medical emergency plan. Mr. Remsky, please. Thank you, Mrs. Garfield. In each of your packets this evening, I have placed a copy of the medical emergency plan that will be in place for the 2019-2020 school year. And as part of our plan, we train multiple people in each building in CPR, first aid, and how to use an automated external defibrillator or an AED. There are three AEDs located here at the high school, two AEDs at the English, Kaverian, Lafayette, Paula, and Webster and Whittier, and one AED at the Adams, Devons, Webster School Extension, and the school administration building. Thank you. Um, I make motion a motion to accept the uh, medical emergency plan as presented. Second. Second. A uh, motion made and seconded to accept the uh, medical emergency plan as presented by Mr. Obronsky. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye, sir. Thank you. Item number three is the acceptance of the school safety response and emergency operations plan. Mr. Obronsky. In your packet that was sent home to you on Friday, there were actually two pieces of information. The school flip chat and the emergency operations plan. One is more detailed. One is something you can just go to quick in an emergency and flip to the tabs. So on June 27, 2019, all administrators in the Everett Public Schools met with representatives from the police and the fire department to update the flip chart and the emergency operations plan. As many of you know, part of our plan is using the ALICE system, which is alert, lockdown, inform, counter, and evacuate. Each principal received these plans last week and they were distributed to all faculty and staff today. The paraprofessionals that will come tomorrow will receive this book tomorrow. There are only four minor changes to the flip chart, uh, basically correcting grammar and spelling. And in the emergency operations plan, the only changes that were made were on page five, which is the names of all the new staff. Page five has the phone numbers and the extensions. That was the only change made in that. Thank you. Make motion to accept the school safety response and emergency operations plan. Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. Mr. Barrows. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Bransky. Um, we had a few months ago, I believe, a discussion regarding some confusion from some parents, especially ELL parents, regarding our uh, emergency in case of bomb threats. I think it was. Uh, falling to, I believe, Ms. Matarazzo's uh, mm -hmm. death, right? Um, so, not sure if the, perhaps Ms. Gautier has a plan already, but I believe it would be important, and 
forgive me if you already have this plan, to explain to parents, perhaps in a parent-teacher's conference, not sure which way, in multiple languages, what happens. Doesn't need to explain this whole book, but what happens if there is an emergency such as, you know, that we have, I know that there are different names, right? right. I can explain, I'm sorry to answer. So if we can explain, find one of these opportunities, bring interpreters, and explain to those parents, again, not the entire book, just this emergency piece. If there is an emergency, you will get a call, or you do not get a call, uh, your kids will be in the classroom, or your kids will be, like, whatever, but it's better that they understand, because they are not going to read this book, and well, some of them will not understand, because English is a second language. Well, we don't share that book with the parents, mm -hmm because it is our emergency plan, so we don't share that with, we do not want somebody who could possibly, I'm not saying it's a parent, it could be right. anybody. Got it, into okay. The building. But what you're talking about, Mr. Barrett, just so you know, is Appendix G and Appendix H. It's the difference between a lockdown and a shelter in place. Uh-huh, so oh yeah. Certainly we could go over that in some sort of video or some sort of message that can go on our website and go out to the parents or well, presented at schools, but Mrs. Gothi and Mr. Shaw and myself can talk about the best way to do that, and we can come back the next meeting with some sort of plan to be that, able to do that. That that would be great, because at least, I mean, you do not need to do a full explanation, but just what it is, right? Uh, a, B, and C, this is what happens. So do not panic. The schools know what it is or what to do, but it's important in multiple languages that they are aware of it. I think, um, Mr. Barris, just uh, to reiterate what Mr. Abramsky is saying, I think you, the use of our social media on our website, if we created some, uh, some video presentation, uh, and then we can even uh, have those translated as well so that we can get it out there. I think sometimes when we have just that one meeting in the school, mm -hmm. scheduling conflicts and everything else, this way it's accessible to parents constantly. They can update it. We'll send something out. We'll you know, send something out on our Facebook page. I think that's a great idea. I agree. Ms. Yeah. Gautier, you had... Yeah, we were planning to do that as we increase the visibility of the website uh -huh. in our Facebook page, uh -huh. just to take the key points from some of these plans that we have, and there are so many, right. just to have them translated and put up there so parents can reference them. That would be terrific. Yeah, I'll, and I would happy, be happy to distribute that mm -hmm. through my networks as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe we had a motion. Mr. Ewan? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, motion to accept. Exactly. Um, motion been made and seconded to accept the school safety response and emergency operations plan as presented by Mr. Bramsky. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have. <clears throat> Item number four is a request to dispose of surplus furniture and equipment. Mr. Bramsky, please. Thank you. As you can see from the information in your packet, there are quite a few books to dispose of at the English school. I will not go through the whole list, but there are 629 in all. Also at the Cavarian, there are seven large computer desks, two small cafeteria tables that are broken, five rolling computer tables, eight broken one-piece student desks, and one library table with broken legs. I'm just requesting permission to discard them. Move for the Second. Motion made and seconded to uh, allow Mr. Bermsky to dispose of surplus furniture and equipment. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have. Item number five is the update on the student activity account, Mr. Gremsky. Thank you, Mrs. Gauthier. In your packet this evening, I have placed a copy of the balances in the student activity account in the 41 different accounts that existed as of June 30th. The yellow highlighted ones in your packet are five actually accounts that were not used in the last three years. And by the manual that we created in December of 2015, those accounts need to be closed. And there is one additional account. It's in the pink there. Obviously, the class of 2019 graduated. So we'd like to rename that the class of 2020. So I did talk to Mr. Norman, the principal. In total, there are $905.16 in the five accounts that we haven't used in three years and is $8,856.63 in the fundraising account for the class of 2019. Mr. Norman's recommendation, if the board agrees with him, would be to roll that all into the class of 2020 fundraising account. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded to roll the 
$9,761.79. Uh, roll it all into the class of 2020 fundraising. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I have. Item number six is the request to conduct evening school. Mr. Shaw. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Gauthier. I'd just like to bring to the committee's attention that we'd like to run evening school again this year. Uh, we'd like to run it. It's a 10-week program that begins on September 23rd. It's here at Everett High School. Uh, we'd like to conduct registration on September 16th, 17th, and 18th from 5 to 8 here at Everett High School. And we use, we're going to offer the usual selection of courses, uh, introduction to computers, introduction to Microsoft Office, GED preparation course, English for the foreign born, conversational Spanish, conversational Italian, and furniture refish, refinishing. So with your permission, we'd like to begin to advertise for those courses in the registration, uh, in the newspapers, and on our website, and on TV, uh, with your permission. Move paper action. Second. Which was made and seconded to uh, conduct uh, evening school uh, beginning September 23rd, running for 10 weeks. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes out. Thank you. I would like to take items 7 through 14 collectively and request for favorable action. So moved. So, uh, motion made and seconded to take items 7 through 14 uh, collectively and uh, move favorable action. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes out. Item number seven is the request to reauthorize Mr. Charles Bremsky and Mr. Kevin Shaw, assistant superintendents, to sign all documents pertaining to procurement. Item number eight, request from Susan Tora, public health nurse, to use the Lafayette School to run a drive-through influenza clinic on Saturday, October 5th, 2019. The clinic will run from nine to noon um, also requesting the use of the building from 8 to 1. And if the chance of severe weather, the clinic would be held in the cafeteria. Item number 9 is a request for permission for the superintendent and the assistants to work with Eric Demas, Chief's, uh, Everett's Chief Financial Officer, for the school department to cover the cafeteria workers' health insurance and other benefits during the transition from Aramark to Whitson's Food Services. Item number 10, request from Ms. Tammy Turner, Director of Athletics, and Mr. Taylorson Pierre, the head football coach, to use the cafeteria at Everett High School for pregame meals. Item number 11, request from Mr. Eugene O'Brien, Coordinator of Music for the Crimson Tide Band and cheerleaders to participate in the Eastern States Exposition, also known as the Big E, Massachusetts Day in West Springfield, Thursday, September 19th, 2019. Item number 12, acceptance of the following grants. $218,000 from the 1-8 Foundation. Item number 13, acceptance of the following donations. $10,000 from Exelon. Item number 14, the date of the next school committee meeting will be Monday, September 16th, 2019. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Gauthier. Uh, if I may, from the chair, I'd like to uh, uh, just give a quick, uh, going back to number nine, mm -hmm. in terms of the uh, cafeteria workers. Uh, just want to state uh, that uh, Mr. Parker and I had the uh, pleasure and privilege, along with Ms. Gauthier, Mr. Bremsky, and Mr. Shaw, uh, we attended sort of a introductory conference at Everett High School uh, cafeteria uh, a couple of weeks ago? August 15th. August 15th, thank you, Mr. Bremsky. And uh, presentation was fantastic, uh, extremely impressive, and I think we were all happy to report that the uh, uh, cafeteria workers seem to be much more at ease, much more comfortable, and uh, quite frankly, the presentation from uh, Whitson's management people uh, like I told them, it made me want to run out and uh, become a chef uh, once the, after they got through. Uh, Mr. Parker, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, but... Uh, well, no, it's just that uh, it goes to show you kind of part of the transition when you go from a billion-dollar company to a, basically a family-owned business that the uh, president and CEO, uh, Paul Wickham, was here to talk to the staff and reassure him Correct. that, you know, everything right now is focused on quality of life, quality of food will happen by itself so right. Right. 
Mr. Can Francis. I just add to Mr. Apazan number nine, just Go so ahead. the school committee is aware? Go ahead. Uh, this is not going to cost us a lot of money out of the cafeteria revolving research uh, from my talking to the workers. There's only one worker that actually had their health insurance with Aramark. Yeah. And there's a few that had some delta, dental and some vision. So this is not going to be a significant cost. I didn't know how many workers had health insurance, but there's actually was only one employee that had the health insurance with Aramark. So this is not going to cost a lot of money. Excellent. Mr. Parker. And, and if I could, because there's been some confusion uh, based off a post I did on, on social media. This is just a one-time thing. We're not looking to cover health insurance for every, every, every person. That's the vendor's responsibility. But because the contractor was awarded so late, um, usually when people uh, would show up, health insurance is in place. But because of that 60, 90 day window, there's a little bit of a gap. We're trying to help people to bridge. Yeah, there's a 60 day waiting period, yeah. which they, if anyone needed to pick up those benefits, they could pick them up from Whitson's on 11 1 2019, November 1st. So it's only for a couple of months. Right. And the other thing is that people say, well, so they're, they're vendor employees. They are in theory, but they're part of the Everett Public Schools family. Absolutely. Um, some of these men and women, they've been in, in, in this program for 20 years. Yes. Just because the hat now says Whitson. They're still Everett, they serve our kids, you know, and um, the good thing about having the, the same employees, the other added benefit is that it, it, it's that added layer of stability for the children, right? They're gonna go and see the same cafeteria worker that they've been seeing every day over, over the course of their, their uh, academic life. So uh, feedback that I'm hearing from the employees, things are going well, and um, you know, we'll see what happens. Absolutely. Uh, Ms. Cadell. If I may, um, I, I've been told <coughs> that most of the food is the same, which I was expecting a lot of changes because I know we're into this big healthy thing. But I was actually happy for the kids because they're very excited that chocolate milk and chocolate cookies were brought back. <laughs> I don't see that as healthy, but you know what? It makes the kids happy. So I was a little surprised oh. since the mayor's on this, you know, healthy food oh. kick and, oh. you know, everybody went along with that. So I was a little surprised. Then I thought, well, maybe the chocolate's not really chocolate. Maybe the cookie's not really cookies. You know, they just think maybe they're soy. I'm not sure, but I haven't, I haven't tried one yet. But when you guys do, let me know. No, I will. Thank well, you. From a personal standpoint, I've gotten into a lot of trouble because I do give my grandchildren chocolate milk. So, uh, uh, Item number three is items submitted by school committee members. Uh, I see these are uh, mine, Mrs. Gauthier. Yes, sir. Uh, on September 4th, 6 p.m., will be a joint meeting of the school committee and city council in regards to the finding of the school task force uh, at City Hall. Uh, uh, Mr. Parker. Um, on this piece, Mr. Chairman, um, if we could, can we please get a copy of the report prior to the meeting? I, I would hope so. Yeah. Uh, but I will. Uh, I was contacted by uh, Mr. Mangan about this uh, meeting, so uh, I will uh, contact them tomorrow. And because, uh, you know, um, unlike an audit that was done 15 years ago that was sprung upon us, well, I feel a lot better about this situation. Mm -hmm. I still want to be prepared and, and, and know what the findings were um, so we can address them correctly. Sure. So, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Ehler. If I may add to follow up on Mr. Parker's, now, if they want to maintain confidentiality, they can always just email it to us so that there aren't a lot of hard copies out there. So we all, they all have our email addresses. We can always download it and print it up um, so we can make, yeah. make sure that um, co the copies aren't going out into the public before we have the meeting, too. Yeah. And just to be clear, I'm really encouraged by this. I, I think it's going to be a good outcome for us, it's good, good, good outcome for the city. You know, we've been on the same page. Now it's in writing. Uh, I'm not afraid of anything. I don't expect anything, you know, bad. It's just that I'd like to know. And I'm sure my colleagues would too. Prior oh, yeah. to walking I mean, uh, Spaggy, you were involved. Mr. Ely was involved. I was involved. Mr. D'Onofrio was involved. So, uh, you know, I uh, have no fear either. Right. Uh, that was for informational purposes. Uh, number two is also for informational purposes the uh, uh, next meeting. Uh, the uh, superintendent search committee will be September 10th, 6 p.m. Uh, I put down Everett High School. Uh, Do you have a particular area? Um, want to go culinary? Library. So it's easy when Cul you come in the door? Oh, yeah. Well, we're, 
Where were you before? Crimson, Crimson Cafe. Crimson Cafe. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. That's, I really appreciate that. Thank you. And just so people are aware, uh, the uh, actual uh, on Mass Association of School Committee website is the actual uh, uh, advertisement for the uh, uh, superintendent, uh, if anyone wants to look at it. And if I can add to that, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mr. Park. It's also on the Mass Superintendent's website, too, which is www.massupt.org. So uh, they're using a network. So the jobs posted, we're accepting applications, and the timeline is uh, accessible via these websites. Right. Again, that was for informational purposes. Uh, subcommittee reports. Uh, committee on Finance, we don't have one, correct? Correct. No. There is no Committee on Finance. Uh, Committee on Teachers, Mr. Panarisi. Yes, and tonight uh, the school committee, uh, let's sort of say the committee on teachers and administrators met, Mr. Barrels and I, as well as the rest of the school committee administrators. Um, what was discussed was the new titles for some of the administrators, where they moved to, what their new titles are, and uh, the principals of all our schools introduced all their new teachers for this year, uh, 1920, and um, it all went well. Uh, the meeting ended about 6.20. Make a motion to uh, accept the committee report as presented and placed on file. Second. Uh, motion made and seconded to accept the uh, uh, committee minutes as presented. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, Just let me make a correction. That ended about 5.20. Sorry. Okay. Wow. We're good. Okay. As amended. As amended. Motions are made uh, to accept that uh, the minutes as amended. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, no bills and payrolls. No unfinished business. New business. Uh, acceptance of handbooks. Mr. Shaw. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, normally at this meeting we give you student handbooks for K to 8, uh, student handbooks for grades 9 through 12, and employee handbooks for you to vote on and approve as the official handbooks for the coming school year. Uh, as you may or may not know, last Thursday, we had a presentation for all the administrators in the district uh, by Ms. Jean Hartle, who is the president and CEO of Safety and Respect at Work. Uh, she gave us a presentation to all the administrators last Thursday, and then 100% of the employees, teachers, para uh, not paraprofessionals, uh, teachers, clerical workers, custodial workers, all had a pre the same presentation today uh, in two groups. It's a two-hour presentation for each group. Um, Ms. Hartle does independent investigations into allegations of sexual and discriminatory, uh, discriminatory harassment, workplace violence, bullying, and retaliations. She does Title IX investigations. So what we wanted to do was hold off until she gave those presentations to everyone so that we make sure that our policies that we had in our handbooks that we were passing out to everyone were, this would mirror what she was going to teach the employees and that she did. And as a matter of fact, there was one um, policy, it was an anti-fraternization policy that we didn't have anything in our handbooks, our, all three of those handbooks. Um, that we thought we, we wanted to definitely include in our handbook. So the handbooks weren't ready to, for publication. They will be ready for your review at the September 16th meeting. But we do have to have a, a vote to have a handbook. And an, upon the advice of council, they're recommending that the school committee adopt the 2018-19 handbooks and continuation of those policies until you approve the new handbooks. And hopefully that'll be on the September 16th meeting. Uh, Mr. Shaw, from the chair, uh, I hate the word, but, uh, you know, rather than transparency, just in terms of openness, uh, we want 100% of uh, school employees uh, to receive this training. Yep. Uh, when can we as the school committee get that training? Uh, actually, actually, the comment came up today, the school committee to receive that training. We also have the futures people haven't received that training as well, uh, as well as our paraprofessionals that haven't received that training. So I am going to work with Gene uh, to come up with a date that's acceptable for the school committee to have the training and a separate date for those other groups to have the training. And as a matter of fact, uh, Mrs. Gauthier and I talked to her today at length 
about actually conducting an additional training for all of our administrators for any incidents that they have to investigate so that she will teach us how to properly investigate those things that are investigated within the school within the purview of the, of the principal or assistant principal. And we're gonna run that in conjunction with uh, Everett, Malden, and Revere, I believe, uh, and the administration for all of those. But I will come up with some dates uh, so that the school committee can, in fact, get the training on, on that as well. Yeah, just in terms of full disclosure, uh, in my position, we have training, uh, but uh, our training is online. And I was actually told by people that the online training is sort of old-fashioned that it's more to have someone a live person do the training is actually the way that it's supposed to be now so uh, we're sort of I guess behind on the state a little bit uh, Mr. Barrow so I wasn't aware of that we, we had <laughs> we, yeah. we had difficulty finding a, 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 an online program that was up-to-date current relevant and uh, Ms. Hartle's present, I've gotten all positive feedback from her presentations today. Uh, she's dynamic, she's in the field, she brings real life experiences uh, to what she's giving to uh, you know, the presentation that she's giving. Uh, and I think if we bring her here before the school committee for you guys to have a, a training, not before the school committee, but a, a training with the school committee, I think you'll find the same. Very good, thank you. Ms. Ms. Gratia. Would you prefer an evening? Uh, I, again, it's this is one of those things that I think has to, be, has to be for me. Uh, yeah. sent yeah. out yeah. to everyone. Even the or on a Saturday uh, right. would, be, would be ideal. Saturday, yeah. Evening or Saturday. Right. As long as you provide breakfast. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe <laughs> is that a proviso? It's going to come, <laughs> it's come from the cafeteria account, <laughs> Mr. Park. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Shaw. Are you, were you uh, through with your presentation? I'm, uh, yes, I am. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Park. Just to build on Mr. Bar uh, Barrows, I still want to call you Almeida, his comments earlier regarding uh, collateral in different languages. The student handbook especially, that's interpretive, but that's on online only? No, no, we print that out. You do print it out? Yes. Okay. The topics of shelter in place and uh, lockdown, Those, there's a highlight in each of the student manuals on that one, right? Yeah, in this handbooks that are sent home to the students, elementary and high school, there is a, a, a section because it's our policy on shelter in place and lockdown. Yeah. And those, our handbooks are translated into Spanish, Haitian Creole, Portuguese, Portuguese Arabic. and Arabic. Now, there's a, um, a sign off form that needs to be returned? That's correct. How's the uh, response rate on, on that? On the sign off at the elementary schools, there are actually four or five sign off sheets in the elementary handbook. There's one at the high school. As far as I know, we get 100% of them back. No, normally we receive 100% no, of them back. Which is signed back. by the parent, right? Yeah. It's, like, it's like the lunch forms, but I mean, we're very diligent in getting those returned to us. Okay. Uh, Mr. McLaughlin. Oh, well, actually, first off, we have, we have a, 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 I'd like to make a motion that we accept the. Okay, Ms. Gaddell. Student, Thank you. Oh, you have no, a question. I have a question. <clears throat> now, at a um, subcommittee meeting a while ago, we were talking about this and this training and, and so forth, which is very necessary. And I had mentioned about what do we do for our students? How do our students know the difference between somebody tapping them on the shoulder to say, you know, hi, excuse me, or that they may be touching them inappropriately? And then, at that point, how do they know where to go and that they shouldn't be afraid and that they need, if they need help, there is help within our system and there'd be no retaliation or anything like that. It goes to all of our students and I'm gonna say at this point, especially the EL students that may truly not understand. So I think, and I said this before, I know there's training programs out there that can be taught to the children so that they do know they have no fear and they know where to report it. So are we do, gonna do anything with that since we've opened the door on all of this for the adults? I, I think that training is something that's necessary as you, you're pointing out to us. I think uh, one of the things we can look at is Middlesex Partnership for Youth to see what they have available. I know we've had them in at different places. I don't think we've done a 100% the same type of training across the district, but I know we've brought them in on a couple of different occasions for a similar types of training. I think that we can work together with the guidance department uh, to see if we can get that training in so it's consistent across the district. Yeah, I think it's really important. I think we need to do this sooner rather mm -hmm. than later. I agree. 
And uh, I know that there's videos out there that children can relate to, they don't mind watching videos and stuff, but I think bringing the uh, Middlesex Partnership for Youth is a great idea. And anything we can do yeah. to help our I'll children. I'll contact them tomorrow. Thank you. Ms. Thank you. Yes. Excellent. Thank so you, Ms. Scott Dillon. Ms. Scott, yeah. October is Awareness to Bullying Month, and we have um, surveys for all students grades 3 through 12, the yearly surveys. We used to do it in the spring, but now it's better to do it in the fall. This way we can get the data back and address any issues that we see through the responses. <coughs> Also, um, in the policy on bullying, the teachers have to sign off that they explain that policy to the kids in language the kids can understand. So that's something they certainly go through. We have programs, the Open Circle program. We try not to focus on the negative, but yet on the positive, how to be all inclusive for anybody coming into the classroom. They leave the extra chair for the person and practice a lot of kindness type moves. Um, and we also have the Mass Aggression Reduction Center working, especially with grades four through six, five through eight. So we try to get some sessions for those kids together and then group on at the high school. So we're, we, we're really all over it all the time. Ms. Goodell. On that note, Ms. Mr. Chairman, through you to Mrs. Goth here, what do we do, if anything different, for any of our special needs students when it comes to bullying. It's a whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. So, and it could be special needs on special needs, whatever the case may be. It could be a matter of a child hugging a child, but the other child doesn't understand that it's not meant to hurt. How do we handle something like that? Well, a lot of the special needs children have one-on-one -on -one aids and they talk to them and explain to them what's acceptable behavior and what isn't. I've seen it myself as kids are waiting even here at the high school to exit at the end of the day. You know, the aides are right there with them and they, they do want to hug each other and they say, no, that's not right for school and you know, we're waiting for our transportation. Let's focus on that. So it's redirection rather than you're right, you're wrong. It's just focusing them on the task at hand. And I know that every every student that requires a you know, one on one has one, but we're still having the problem within the system. And I know, and I know you're aware of. I know Mr. Bramski is aware of a family that's been having a problem for over a year, and they've never been offered. And we've talked about this: right. the opportunity to have a sit down with the parents of each of the the mm -hmm. children that are involved. And I think getting it out in the open, and it's great having the one-on-one -on -one and being explained to in a positive way why it's not <laughs> acceptable, or this person isn't trying to hurt you, and, and that's wonderful, except that I think the parent involvement needs to be, their, their awareness maybe needs to be heightened as to what they can do at, at the home level to instruct their children. Or, you know, and make it a positive experience as well. So I'm not sure that we're on the same page sometimes as mm -hmm. what goes on at home. And I'm just thinking, I know many years ago when I served on the committee as Millie 2.0 instead of 2.1, I, uh, I, I did a lot of those meetings with parents and with administrators, even with the psychologists, with PT, and you know, people, everybody that would be, so that the parents could be on board. And I think if they carry it home and continue on with the same instruction at home, that consistency goes, instead of just six or seven hours a day, it goes 24-7, and I think that's very important. So hopefully we can think about doing something like that and maybe offering more to those that are still having problems with the bullying and so forth, okay? Mr. Barrows and I have been in uh, Excuse contact. Me, we're not to I know. You. It's the sun. Yeah. <laughs> the sun is shining on me. With these parents, some select parents who have ongoing issues, mm -hmm. and the parents I think you're referring to um, know that they can come to me, and that was my word with Mr. Barrows. If they complain to him, then they ought to come to me. So. And, and if they come to you, where does it go from there? Do we involve the principal? I want to, I want to hear what they have to say, and okay. then we'll put a plan together. Okay. And I will work with them. I don't want to release it to the school or anyone else. 
So I think if I guide them along the process that maybe we can finally settle what, what else. And Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Packer, for doing that. Uh, again, I, I believe we need a motion uh -oh. to uh, uh, continue the 2018-19 handbooks. Mm -hmm. uh, so move. So move. Second. 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 Okay, motion made and seconded to continue uh, to utilize and uh, keep in place the 2018-19 uh, handbooks for high school, K-8, and employees. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye, sir. Thank you. Before I adjourn, just a piece of advice from Mr. Aperzades and Ms. Cadello from a, a father of seven, a grandfather of 13. If chocolate milk will keep the peace, go with it. <laughs> I move it. It's certainly in my house, Mr. McLaughlin. It certainly is. <laughs> um, uh, motion's been made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Aye.